Hi everybody, I'm Joey. Well, it's almost uh, summer, well at least in the southern hemisphere, and we really need a good table out on the deck here and also some shade. Um, I'll go into the specifics a lot at the end of this video, so if you want to stick around and see why I've made it the way I have, wait till the end, otherwise, check it out. Okay, so I've got these few pieces of Iroko that some of them were an old bar top, which a neighbor dropped off to me. Um, and I've got another piece left over from that outdoor sofa I made about exactly a year ago. And um, I need an outdoor table for me now. So this is what I've got to work with, and I'm going to see if I can make a table. So I can start breaking down all the large pieces. This will be the tabletop. I'm just using a, an epoxy, something like West Systems. I'm using International. Uh, <clears throat> I've just added a glue powder which is really just a thickening thickening agent to make it less runny although in the temperature that I have now that's not really helping much but it doesn't really matter I just need to get glue on it With the tabletop gluing up, I can start working on the leg assemblies, breaking these large pieces of Iroko down. Using my dado stack, I can form the tenons on the pedestal leg. And instead of setting up my small mortising machine, I just drilled out for the mortises and cleaned up with a chisel. So the top of the leg has got the two split tenons, and the base connection to the foot has a single large tenon, and you'll see why that is a bit later on. So with the joinery done, I took the leg assemblies apart again and then I could cut the profiles of each of the pieces on my X-carve. Because of the thickness of material, I couldn't cut all the way through with the X-carve. Right, now with my shapes essentially cut out, I can just follow the cut line pretty roughly on the bandsaw and then I'll use a, um, a pattern bit on the router to trim it up. So if anybody's interested in the XCAV or Easel, which is the drawing program, uh, go check out the links in the description. With the band sawing done, I could trim everything up with the pattern bit. You'll notice on this piece there's a little lump there and that's because I had the drawing not quite right. So I just needed to fix up that little mistake from the uh, CNC. And now the top was well out of the clamps, the epoxy was dry, I could give it a quick uh, going over. It was actually sitting yeah, pretty bloody flat. And then I could square it all up on the panel saw. Then I could break out my favorite HNT Gordon uh, dovetail planes 
and throw the uh, the large sliding dovetail on the end of the top. Next was to cut the corresponding dovetail pocket in the top rail of the leg assembly. I did this entirely on the table saw because it was super quick. With the dovetails fitting nicely, I could take all the pieces for the leg assembly and put on a large roundover. I ran the same roundover bit on the tabletop, um, so it hit where it would, but there was also that large roundover on there that I had to deal with as well. But before that, I got on to gluing up the leg assemblies. I'm just using a two-part epoxy for that. So I really didn't like how this roundover uh, looked when it was inside the dovetail. So I ended up cutting these pieces off and then just gluing in some little blocks that uh, had a square edge. And it, it looked much better. The downside is that you end up seeing a join line, um, but it could you could get away with saying it's a, a large uh, scribing line. So with all that sorted out, I could seal the underside of the tabletop, and I'm using a penetrating epoxy. I needed to flatten out the join, the flush join on the end of the leg where the sail post is going to go. And then I was able to just squeeze the whole leg assembly into the X carve and I'm going to cut the pocket or part of the half lap that will take the end post. So with the legs sorted out I could get on to making the posts and the top rails for the shade sail. And I used my dado stack again to cut out the waste for the halving joint. Played around with a few angles for the, you know, the top rail and worked out that six and a half degrees looked pretty nice. So that's what I'm doing for the top rail connection to the uh, post. dry fit the post to the uh, leg assembly and that all worked really nice. The roundovers just looked um, really crisp. So at this point the leg assemblies were finished and I could get on to sealing them with epoxy. Along with the tabletop as well.
and I could glue up the post and the top rail connection. With uh, those drying up, I could start assembling the leg bases to the tabletop. So I just needed to wax up the dovetails and then try and slide on the leg assemblies. So I'm not entirely happy with how stable the table is. Kind of foolishly hoping that these dovetails were going to be some miracle bracing device. Uh, so I'm going to add a little angled bracket on here. I'm making it this long because I can hide the screw inside this pocket. Um, See how that goes. And it actually worked uh, really well. So next thing, I sanded all the epoxy down with a 300 grit and then added uh, a couple of coats of teak oil, which made a really nice uh, smooth finish. So with the table essentially done, I could get on to the shade sail part of it. So by the time I bash in the head of the bolt flush, I've just enough for my nut. And so the hole going through this piece is tight. The bolt's going to stay in the, the shade frame. And I'm going to probably make the bottom hole here, I don't know, an extra mil bigger, just to make it easier to put the whole frame on. Just got to go through the top frame and I need to countersink it into there. I should have made the countersunk hole first. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. Right, interesting uh, tip. This is a, a proper uh, shade sail, so UV resistant. Shade sail, but it says it's three meters square. Well, it's not even square, and it's certainly not three meters square. I'd be lucky if it's, well, it's like 2450. So check your shade sails after you buy them before you start making, <laughs> making your frames. Yeah, they're just normal staples. If I could find stainless staples, that would be ideal. But at the moment, these will hold it in place just fine.
So the other thing that's annoying with these shea cloths is that they're not square, or they, or they certainly don't have straight edges, is what I mean. So while I've, on that end, I've used the seam as a straight edge, it's not actually straight. So what I'm going to do is just pull this taut and then just trim off any excess along the inside of edge here and then I'll deal with that afterwards. So my bright idea was to use a gas torch to kind of stop the fraying, any more fraying happening, but um, the stuff really doesn't like the heat, so probably not a good idea. So I ended up just cutting a seam off one of the offcuts and then put that over top of that ugly cut edge that I had. Okay everybody, uh, thanks for watching, that's it, if you just want to watch the build, so uh, thanks for watching, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, otherwise, uh, just before I go on and ramble about the design elements, I uh, just wanted to give a quick little notice, for a long time people have asked me for t-shirts, um, and well now I have some t-shirts available, so there's t-shirts for girls and boys and people who are cold, so if uh, you are in the market, go check out the link in the description below, otherwise, Stick around and listen to me ramble on. Okay, so uh, the sun here in New Zealand is crazy hot. The, the UV is, is really killer. Um, for example, I did a quick uh, Google search. In the United Kingdom, they, on the UV index, they get about an eight maximum. Um, here in the height of summer, we can get up to a 13, which is ridiculously uh, hot. Uh, that equals a burn time of kind of 10 to 12 minutes and so you really can't be sitting outside enjoying the outside for very long at all so shade is a must of course i could have used an umbrella uh, in this particular spot we get a lot of crosswind and umbrellas generally we found last year just blew away too often it's too difficult keeping them in place so i wanted something that was a bit more sturdy so i think this ticks the boxes I've got the kind of cantilever off two sides um, and that is because the sun here never really gets overhead it's a few degrees off in this particular location and so you're looking kind of uh, west more, more west than anything uh, so north is here that's the sunny side uh, in the southern hemisphere at least um, and so we're gonna hit really hot sun from about midday so somewhere here through to um, in the afternoon four o'clock and so i want as much shade coming towards me as possible so that's why i've got the the cantilever hanging over that way of course one of the main design considerations for me was the amount of timber i had this is uh, irocos african hardwood um, it is similar to teak so it doesn't actually need sealed I just wanted to give it some extra protection I didn't really want to buy any any extra timber mainly because at one I didn't have any spare money uh, and two I thought it would be an interesting challenge to see if I could build something out of the few planks of uh, timber that I had and so I started by actually once I worked out what pieces I wanted for the tabletop I, I then drew all my pieces out in SketchUp, all the actual boards that I had, and started laying them out uh, and coming up with a design. And I actually ended up with a couple of, you know, smallish but usable pieces left over. So that was a bit of a bonus. Some people may be questioning this joint between the tabletop and the, the leg kind of base with a sliding dovetail. 
essentially it's working as a, a breadboard end, which is great. Uh, so that's a plus. So that way I can have a flat table without any slats in it. Um, and the breadboard ends are going to hold it flat. And, and because they're just friction fit, it's going to move as it wants to. The downside, of course, is that this is potentially, well, is really a, a water trap for when it rains. I'm really just going to see how this goes because one, I've got the Aroco timber. It's naturally water rot resistant. Two, I sealed inside with epoxy and then waxed it again. Uh, and then it's got tea coil that's dribbled down inside it as well. I think it's probably going to last a good long while. Uh, and if worst comes to worst, I can actually kind of slide the legs off and do any repairs or even potentially replace the top, I suppose. The shade cloth, I'm not 100% how it's going to last, uh, especially that I've just stapled it on. I'm certainly not planning on leaving the shade cloth out all year round. It will probably stay up there attached, you know, two months of the year. January, February is the hottest here. If, if a storm's coming, I think I'll take it off. It's pretty simple just to undo the four nuts and lift, the, lift, lift it off and I can put the whole shade sail in the garage uh, down below. Ideally, I think I mentioned, I would have stainless steel staples. So if I can find them, I'll replace it with them. Also, I just want to see how the, um, the staples hold up to the wind and everything. With the cloth being wrapped right around, I think it's going to be fine. Um, but you know, only time will tell and I'll see how that goes. Probably during winter, the, the, the real winter months, I will take these posts off and potentially I won't even leave this on the deck in winter because I mean, that's number one way how to wreck your outdoor furniture is, is to leave it out year round. I actually recommend to all my clients that they need to have a specific um, custom kind of canvas cover for outdoor furniture settings. Uh, because really nothing, no joinery, no matter how it's done, is going to last well outside. Especially if you have extreme weather. In our case, it's extreme heat and UV, which just breaks everything down. I can imagine in other parts of the world, you've got to deal with heat and snow as well. So anyway, I, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Maybe you gleaned some insight into um, something. Hopefully uh, I helped someone with something. <laughs> See you on the next one.